name's Roger Nutting. Um, I've been uh, researching the issue of Gaw uh, Ernie Bond and Gordon Vale for a, a very long time now. I'm president of the Mountain Huts Preservation Society and hence my interest in perhaps the historical side of Gordon Vale. When I first went there in the 1980s, would have, I think it was 1985 we first went in there. Um, it was the end of April, freezing cold, sleet and snow and, and the Gordon River in flood and, and really something special, you know. I thought, um, what's left there? We didn't really know because um, one of our party had gone in and visited Ernie Bond as a student in, in the early 1950s and so I'd seen some photographs of what potentially could have been there but when we got there of course everything was in ruins. Um, there was only one building still standing and that was Ernie Bond's little office at the back although it was in rather a poor state so but hey that didn't really matter too much because the moment I arrived there and saw what was there, bang, there was, it, it all started from there. One story that I think is, uh, is, uh, is one that sticks in my mind, David Pinkard from Devonport was, uh, was a walker out there and he went out with a party one day, there were a number of males and females and they were staying there and the girls decided that Ernie Bond's little house needed a bit of a clean up and so they, they got in and and started to clean the place up, sweep and wiping the place down and dusting and all sorts of stuff. And um, I guess a man living on his own like he did, uh, things tended to get a little bit untidy, but he had his favourite um, pink enamel mug that uh, was highly stained with tea because he used to he used to drink tea. They reckon they could stand the spoon up in it. It was that that thick and. Uh, this particular day they decided they were going to wash up everything and they washed up his, his, uh, his favourite pink enamel mug in hot soapy water. Bernie Bond not very happy because he, he figured that it, he, he let them know in no uncertain terms about the fact that please don't ever do that again because he considered that they'd polluted his, his favourite drinking vessel with, with soap and so on. But, uh, he was probably someone who you could consider as an early conservationist in the sense that if you read his diaries, the detail on the bird life and the animal life and stuff, he, he became quite an authority on it in that, in that part of the world. And um, yeah, it, it wasn't just somewhere to earn a living or to exist, but there was more to it than that. It was much deeper, I'm sure. When it came on the market, I was somewhat concerned about its future. I wasn't quite sure who was likely to buy it. Uh, and then a good dear friend of mine, young Ann Thwaites, um, pointed out that she was a supporter of the Land Conservancy and that the Conservancy were looking to buy Gordon Vale. She explained to me a lot about the Conservancy. I've since researched a bit, looked at the website, spoken to people, um, and it's appearing to me as though it couldn't be in better hands. I, um, I just think it's a, an extraordinary site in a much bigger landscape that's also extraordinary that deserves the best in terms of preservation and I've, I, I feel quite relaxed now that the Conservancy are the right people to do that.